Scoot up, scoot up, scoot up, scoot up. Grab this gate right here. Keep your arm in the bent position. Chest out, big chest. Not drop your feet, yeah. Yep. Dig your spurs. Squeeze. Go ahead. Squeeze. All right. Move. Don't quit moving. Hand in front of you. Leave Hand in front right of there. you. Leave it there. Move. Move in what way? Move forward, forward. Get up, get up, get up. Forward, forward. Get up. Here I am as a kid. Now I'm a washed up pro snowboarder, dad, and curious food nerd, hell bent on new adventures. I'm Josh Rosen. Food and adventure have led me to some of the most interesting places. So we're off on a mission to source the freshest ingredients, all while taking it in through the lens of the locals. And each adventure ends with a feast. This is dirt. Comanches, conquistadors, and cowboys were all here first. Six flags have been planted, railroads laid, barbed wire strung, and walls built. But an intangible sense of independence still remains. Maybe it's the land so vast, or the mindset of the people here, but everything does feel bigger. We're here to explore the largest state in the lower 48. Action. So a big animal. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> We've touched down in the largest desert in North America. It's a wild moonscape with skies so big you can see the curvature of the earth on the horizon. Out here, they say there are two main natural resources, oil and cattle. And that brings us down this dusty road to meet our chef for the episode and his little sister. We always stand here at the front waiting for people. <laughs> this is our usual. Just, hey, Josh. Hey, hi, nice to meet you. Let me introduce you to Liz and Lou Lambert, who have welcomed us to their little slice of heaven in far west Texas. How, do you want to ride a horse? Uh, me, yeah. Have you ridden a horse before? Once or twice. You just bounce up and you know, just hold on tight, right? <laughs> These guys. We could tie you on if you want. The Lamberts are descendants of one of the 300 families that first settled Texas back in the 1800s. Got it when it was still technically Mexico. You don't get more Texan than that. This is Lucky. Good luck. <laughs> Come on, Lucky. Come on. I'm glad Liz is riding with us. This wouldn't be a dirt episode without some grand vistas and me pretending like I'm good at something that I'm not, like horseback riding. And then a dip in the most picturesque feed tank pool on earth. This one I love is my grandmother in South Texas. There's Leon Bridges in the bathtub out back. Oh my God. I should just try to save that, shouldn't I? Uncle Bob, my mother's brother, showing calves. And then, we sure do a lot of calf showing, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> I showed calves. I, was, I need to give you a picture of me showing calves. For fear of you calling me bossy. See, the, the reality <laughs> is she's the youngest and only girl, and she's bossy. <laughs> Yeah, the baby. You know what's true? <laughs> what? what the truth is? What? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Lyndon says all the time. They call this the bunkhouse. It was once a rundown cowboy crash pad, but they brought this place back to life in a way that people who grew up on a long line of hardworking ranchers and artists only could. I'm the seventh generation of our family in Texas and we've been in the cow-calf operation the, the entire time. Yeah. So it's in you, I mean, this is your yeah. DNA is right yeah. in No, I, I originally thought I was gonna be a rancher and I yeah. thought there's gotta be an easier way to make a living. And like a, an idiot, I became a chef. Yeah. <laughs> a classically trained chef, Lou had stints in New York and San Francisco before Texas pulled him back. He's inspired by the camp cookouts of his childhood. Rustic, open fire cooking, but with an elevated technique using the best meats in Texas. And check out this custom smoker Lou made for the place. Brilliant. The bunkhouse is just north of a little town in the middle of nowhere West Texas called Marfa. Ever heard of it? In short, this town has become a pilgrimage for adventurous art lovers. And a unique hotel that Liz designed and built here has become a destination and an experience unto itself. Welcome to El Cosmico. You know, El Cosmico is very near and dear to my heart. Mm. A compound of uniquely painted and remodeled vintage Airstream campers and yurts, 
like retro spaceships crossed with India's colorful Tata trucks. If you go online, you can see Beyonce staying in this trailer because really? she published a bunch of pictures herself on her Tumblr. Yeah. So, you know, like, that was great. I'm sure. Like, Thank you, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah that probably uh, opened you up to five million people. That was better than when Carl Rove stayed here. Fair enough. <laughs> Liz has built a name for herself, melding incredible taste and nostalgia into every one of her boutique hotels and has single-handedly changed the Austin aesthetic. But this little area on the edge of the desert has always been a special place for her. It's always been a testing place for me. Like everybody I've ever loved, I've brought here mm. just to make sure. You know? Yeah, it's very Tom Robbins. It very, yeah. even cowgirls get the blues. Now we're back to the bunkhouse, where Lou's sending us off on our road trip with a family meal. More specifically, a beef tenderloin the size of my right arm, grilled to perfection. We'll help out around the house a little, pour some ranch waters, and soak in some warm Texas hospitality. In Irish culture, thin places are where the veil between the earth and the heavens is believed to be thin. Liz believes Marfa is one of those places like a launching off point to the cosmos, allowing you to be your truest self. There's a world here that Lou and Liz have created together that fosters that same idea. Let's go find more of that. Lou, we'll see you in a week for the final feast. Oh wait, the ribs. We are surrounded by endless desert, but below this parched soil are natural limestone shelves that regulate the flow of groundwater, creating natural aquifers and springs. I must be dreaming. If anything was going to be a portal into the heavens, it would be this. There's even turtles in here, somewhere. I like turtles. Back on the road, heading west, to a port city smack dab in the middle of the desert. The Rio Grande forms what has become a natural border between Texas and Mexico. But here it's more of a passageway. On the American side is El Paso, and a stone's throw away on the Mexican side is the city of Juarez. And until the 1880s, they were one city, Tonight, we're crossing the border with Alejandro Silva, a chef we'll be hanging out with tomorrow in El Paso at his restaurant. And since he grew up in Juarez, why don't we start our story here, like he did. So this is the Rio Grande? This is the Rio Grande, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, you come over here? You're in Mexico? My right foot is on the United States. Oh, there you go. My left foot is in Mexico. You can do this. <laughs> it's beautiful, Jack. Chilitos, patos, everybody okay with pickled, pickled chilies? Like, see, yeah, see. Starting off with steamed cart tacos, topped with spicy pickled chilies, and margaritas from the 100-year-old Kentucky Club, who claims to be the inventor of the slimy cocktail. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers. This bar was opened right after Prohibition as an escape for thirsty Americans. All the wood hand-carved and imported from France. And one last drink at El Faro, the ladies' bar, run by, well, ladies. It's a, um, they call it a curative herb. It's a root, and it's supposed to be like a medicinal, right? But it's a... Uh, it smells like medicine, yeah? Yeah, and it's called, the original name is chuchupasle. The slang or the short term is called chuchos. Some refer to this magical infused tequila as the drink of the desert gods. Definitely medicinal, right? Yeah. It sure didn't make any of us better at pool. Quick hit to the senses and an important reminder of just how amazing the Mexican culture is. Oh, really? Yeah. Another beautiful day in West Texas. El Paso has the largest bilingual workforce in the country. Many of these workers live in Juarez and cross the border each day to work in places like this, bringing with them their culture, heritage, and customs. So this is Lincoln Park. This morning, we're with Alejandro's friend and business partner, Daniel, who is taking us to one of his favorite breakfast spots and a local staple of El Paso. Welcome to La Colonial. 
for breakfast burritos, people are surprised that they don't even have eggs on the menu, even though it's considered a breakfast place. So breakfast burritos in El Paso almost never have eggs in them. So, but the thing about the burritos here, no matter how many ingredients you put in it, they just, it never gets bigger. Like they just put less of other things. So it's always the same size. Can you get brisket and chili con queso together? Sure. That's a classic combo. Unreal. Now the best part about this place is the old machinery pumping out fresh flour tortillas right in the middle of the room. In northern Mexico and in Texas, it's a lot easier to grow wheat, so flour tortillas are king in these parts. We got a brisket and chili con queso with a tortilla that was made about three minutes before on a 50-year-old machine. Welcome to El Paso. Mm. Fully stocked with fluffy flour tortillas, and we're off to gather more West Texas ingredients for Lou. At Licon Dairy, they specialize in making Mexican-style cheese. Today, they're making traditional queso azadero, a cheese that originates from northern Mexico, similar to mozzarella, and great for melting on tortillas. Sorry, quick stop for one more thing. And we've made it to Alejandro and Daniel's restaurant, Taco Neta. The two met in Austin and recently decided to move back to their hometown of El Paso to start a taqueria together. Fresh juice cocktails, vibrant decor, very happy customers. In a city that's been blasted by sand and sun, the dishes here bring color and creativity, unlike anywhere else in the region. We really had a shared connection with food, and actually, I th remember I tried frog legs with him for the first time. I tried oysters with him for the first time, like in a as a 19 year old or yeah, whatever. We're exploring food together. Yeah. A taqueria with a mission to preserve ancient Mexican ingredients while putting new spins on traditional recipes. And an example of their passion for using quality ingredients, despite being in the land of flour, these two are traditionalists and choose to make fresh corn tortillas. We source our corn from, from Mexico, yep. we, we places like Oaxaca, Yucatan, Mexico states, Estado de Mexico. Heirloom varieties of corn from southern Mexico are imported, supporting small family-run Mexican farms. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. How beautiful that boy boy is. Here, the ancient process of nixtamalization is very important and goes back to the Aztec and Mayan times. They start by soaking the corn in lime water overnight, which breaks down the outer husk. This traditional practice draws out more digestible nutrients from the corn and makes it more flavorful. Yep, that's the elasticity you're going for. Great handmade food from two local boys turning their hometown into an even better place. I feel like I would tell people that are looking to start a business somewhere or open a restaurant and they have great experience to go back to your hometown. They need you. We're all stocked up with a variety of El Paso's best tortillas. And now we're off to the other side of town to learn about one of the most important garments in American history. America was built on denim, if you think about it, from like the workers to now fashion. I mean, it, it's... I mean, denim is, a part, is American history. This is Huckberry's American-made denim factory, and we're here with Nick Kemp, lead designer of Flint and Tinder. I'm a kid in a candy store. So what we have going on here is he's uh, what we call felling um, the back two panels together. Uh, this is a very specialized machine that actually kind of folds the, the two raw edges in on itself. But it's a really specialized process, really getting over some of these thicker parts, especially here, where all, all of these panels kind of line up, is really, really tricky to make that look, look good. I mean, along with really tough garments have to come really tough machines. And yeah. so everything has this really amazing feeling of strength yeah, absolutely. From, from beginning to finish. Yeah. Denim is the unofficial uniform of Texas, so it's no surprise that in the 70s and 80s, El Paso was the center of the denim manufacturing universe. I worked in denim in New York City for many years, and I've never seen an American-made denim factory. And as the great Kelly Clarkson said, in Texas, we practically come out of the womb in jeans. Guess I need another pair for the rest of this trip. This whole region is the Chihuahuan Desert, 90% of it lies to the south in Mexico, 
making it the largest desert in North America. Airing down is a must. Daniel and Alejandro aren't afraid to take advantage of it either. Off-roading here is relatively simple. Get a four-wheel drive vehicle, put on a cowboy hat. I, I think that's why people don't. Actually, yeah. leave the hat on the dash and just drive off-road. Gosh, we can be entertained so easily. Yeah, that my axle's on the ground. Pro tip for off-roading, make sure when you rent a truck, it has four-wheel drive. And always drive with a well-equipped friend. Oh, Jesus Christ, sorry, I didn't know he was pulling. Straighten your wheel, straighten your wheel. Straighten it straight, straight. You're good, you're good. You go the other way. Oh. El Paso is an underrated city, and the people from here know that. I'm in the west Texas town of El Paso. I fell in love with a Mexican girl. This wild corner of the state is a reminder of just how important Mexico is to the story of Texas. Thanks for the party, guys. Now, we're heading east, and I'm starting to think you could drive across Texas on a dirt road if you wanted to. Desert-tolerant shrubs, bear grass, yucca, and this plant known as sotol is everywhere. Pueblo and Apache natives used the leaves to make baskets and sandals and ate the heart of the plant like an artichoke. But the natives did more than just weave baskets with these spiny plants. They turned the hearts into liquor. You know, we're gonna stomp the crown and start trimming. We're gonna trim out because they're quite dangerous. Um, we'll be bleeding, that's right. Okay. And that's no, that no fun. This is David Hinkle, the head distiller at Desert Door Distillery. He'll be helping us turn this wild plant into booze. Hell yeah, how does that feel? What? And we're off to Desert Door Distillery. But the desert is hot, and we're not gonna pass up an opportunity to swim in another Texas oasis. It's becoming more lush as we move east. Oak trees replace desert shrubs. And we're here at Desert Door to cash in our Sotal Cabeza for a bottle of its earthy spirit. Hey, look who cleaned up to give us a tour of the facility. First steamed in giant pressure cookers to break down the plant's carbs into sugars, the nectar is pressed out to ferment in giant tanks for weeks, then distilled and barrel aged for flavor. Oh look, did I mention this batch is 100 proof? Wild harvested liquor in a beautiful bottle. And we're off to the big city. Welcome to Austin, Boomtown, USA, a city started by outsiders, but loved by insiders. Big hugs and kisses with the Huckberry founders, and they've surprised me with their savage idea of a welcoming gift. Go rock, rock, loaded with 30 pounds. A couple miles with a 30 pound ruck pack is probably what I need at this point in the trip. Thanks, guys. All right, corporate team building complete. Also, when's the synchronized swimming league start? The do-it-yourself mentality is strong in Texas, and especially here at this bike park in the middle of downtown Austin, made and maintained by local bikers since 1992. This is called an endo. It's like the trick I learned when I was like in third grade. This is Miguel, a <laughs> landlocked soul surfer who teaches local kids to ride. And on skateboard it's similar too because on your skateboard you're pushing on your tail a lot and steering like that. And our bikes were kind of doing that too with our back foot. We're going like <laughs> But we're just having the pedals in. He also teaches 200 pound 45 year olds apparently. Put me in coach. Your bike comes up into you. You're kind of compact. Yeah, you kind of compact. Oh, too much. <laughs> too fast, too fast. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh. We'll count it. Count it, that's <laughs> sick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah! There you go. And I'll stick to the dirt jumps. Yeah! Josh can ride, I'm shocked. Yo, long mowing! I mean, there's not really anything more nostalgic than riding a bicycle and hitting dirt jumps as a kid. Now as an adult, come on. Austin is hugely popular right now and has become one of the fastest growing regions in the country. But luckily, there is a side of Austin that is holding on tight. The dive bars, the food trucks, and honky tonks. The character and culture that many come here and live here for. But places keeping Austin young, weird, and vibrant. And we gotta celebrate with the people keeping that energy alive. Yeah, where yeah. where are we? So <laughs> we're at we're at Jenny's uh, on Burnett Road. It used to be called Jenny's Longhorn Saloon. Yeah. I've been hanging out here for God, 25 years yeah. or so. This place is like pure Austin. I mean, if you look around, it's like this is it's very Austin-y. For those of you who don't already know, this is barbecue legend Aaron Franklin, a DIY punk rocker turned brisket Don of Austin, and this guy knows all the good spots. But every Sunday they do a thing called Chicken Shit Bingo. Chicken shit bingo's the game. If the chicken shit's on your number, you win. Like, it's a really sweet family scene, you know? It's really kind of reminds me so much of when I was a kid. I hung out with my grandparents at a barbecue joint down in Bryan, Texas, and they would go play dominoes, and I just kind of like sat up at the bar, like eating candy corn or Fritos or whatever. It's good to see that the fun and weirdness is still part of this town. Cheers to that. Our last stop in the Violet Crown is the backyard of a couple of friends. The recently two-time Tony-nominated duo, Jamestown Revival. Enjoy the show. Gonna spend some time on the West Coast line Trying to make my way Get inside on money Behind all my bills to pay I rode about the water I drank my share of wine From Truckee, California To that L.A. County line I'm headed back to Austin It's easy to see why this city is growing like it is. It's playful, it's easy to love, and there is still some funk to be had. Don't worry, Lou, we'll get you more ingredients on our next stop. We're heading north out of Austin, through the outskirts of the town where Dr. Pepper was invented. And holy moly, this must be a mirage. We found another oasis. This one with customizable waves. Can we stay forever, please? Look, the crew got in on the action this time. Watch as one of our camera guys rides over the other camera guy. Perfect form. Isn't it such a beautiful sport? Onward, and we're on the final leg of our trip. Welcome to Cowtown. Hell's Half Acre, Paris of the Plains, Fort Worth, Texas. And this is the town where our chef, Lou Lambert, calls home. Let's go grab some breakfast at one of his restaurants. Josh, welcome to Paris Coffee Shop. Thank you. Nice to see you. see you. The Paris Coffee Shop first opened in 1926. A few years ago, Lou and some of his friends took it over, preserving its legacy while leveling it up a bit. Lou grew up eating here, and so did his father. And now, every day at noon, he sits at this counter and orders the Lou breakfast special. All right, new chickens, Lou's breakfast, two times. Growing up in a ranching family, yeah. especially West Texas, yeah. Fort Worth was the major city. Okay. But Fort Worth is actually, and I've heard some people say this, very similar to Austin was in the 90s when I moved there full time. Interesting. Culture, food. Yeah. Livability. Yeah. It's just 
Fort Worth is booming right now. Yeah, quality of life seems high. Yes. Beautiful. Across town, Lou is taking us to grab one final ingredient at his favorite Latin American market. This is what Texas is, is right here. The importance of the Hispanic culture, because that's where we came from. Yeah. Not this version of what people want it to look like. Sure. Like you go to Austin and it's the hipsters and all that. This is Texas. Yeah. This is West Texas, this is North Texas, this is any part of Texas. This is, this is it. Like any true Texan chef, Lou embraces the Mexican influences that are all over the state. This is one of the better tacos I've ever had. The, uh, the cheek meat, can we get about five pounds? And five pounds of yes. beef cheek meat for the final feast should do. Fort Worth is a true Texas city. 100 years ago, it was the major hub for cattle trade in the country. And with booming cities come saloons and entertainment. Bobby Day, Ornette Coleman, Towns Van Zant. The music history is diverse and rich here. And we've stopped by Niles City Sound to hang with someone who's keeping that tradition alive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Texas Piano Man. Uh, so I've been on a soapbox about just like Texas and the way people instantly think about it yeah. when I travel. Sure. It's not what it is, yeah. and I kind of feel like my music is an opportunity to show mm. people what I see Texas as being, mm. which is actually this really diverse, really eclectic. You think about Willie Nelson or somebody. Sure. Sure. Willie Nelson is unlike anyone in the world. Right. He's wildly unique, and yet he's what you think of as Texas. Sure. And I kind of think that's the requirement for like Texans, is that they are very unique. They're their own thing. The stockyards are still very much a part of the Fort Worth identity. One week in Texas and I'm really starting to feel like I'm part of the band. Can I call myself a cowboy yet? Well, maybe not fully. One can dream. Good barbecue, great music. I see you, Fort Worth. You play drums. Did you guys know this? You fucking play, like you play drums. <laughs> and here is where you find out how much of a cowboy you really are. No, you're not wearing white jeans, are you? Uh, I thought I put a little pizzazz on my slow but you're death. You're about to get dirty. Yeah, that's what that's what's the name of the show. You're just you're making sure that you get, you get as dirty extra as dirty. Okay, cool. That'll work. That'll work. All right. Hi. Hey, Ezekiel. Jo Josh. Hi. Nice to meet you. So is this like a training facility for you guys? In, in a way, yes. Okay. Yes. You ever been to a rodeo? Well, you know that they save the best and most dangerous for last. Oh, somebody else was signing a waiver out in the parking lot. <laughs> We're here at Knapp Ranch for the weekly buck out. And we're gonna see how much of a cowboy I really am. My coach today, Ezekiel Mitchell. This guy knows how to ride a bucking bull. Zeke is one of the top bull riders in the world right now. And somehow we've convinced him to show me how to ride one of these things. Why are you trying to look so big for the camera? Man, this thing smells good. I was about to say, it smells like money to me. I don't know what it <laughs> smells like to you. We're going to you next, you better pay attention. Yes, sir. So, put this right in the middle. You see how I'm lined up pretty much with his backbone? Sir. I'm gonna take this from him. We go across the top, back around the back. I wanna be square and nod my head. It's all in one motion. Okay. One more rap, you'd be good. Yeah, cool. Thank you, sir. See, you're already a bull rider. Put your feet on them slats. There you go. Keep on it. Leave it there. Move. Move them what way? Move forward. Forward. Get up. Get up. Get up. And as you can see, I've quickly forgotten all of those things. Have you ever been in a car crash? Well, then you know what it feels like to be thrown off of an 800-pound bucking beast. Spinners, jump kickers, ride outs, few outs, whatever kind of bull you get, 
you better be a good dancer. Let's see how round two goes. Go ahead! There you go. A bruise to the ego, one on the ass, and a slight step closer to manhood. Yeah, we didn't source tons of ingredients as we usually do, but the beauty of Lou's cooking is in the technique. If you give this man a good piece of meat, he'll take care of the rest. He's a master. Method and focus in his cooking. Refined Texas. Nine days on the road, and we've only scratched the surface of this wild place. Texas, you've taught us a lot. We've learned that the Tejano culture of El Paso continues east and provides a subtle backbone for this great state. As tender as a mother's love. And if you ever need to be reminded that we are all just made of stardust, head to the desert where the earth goes on forever and the cosmos might just be right there in front of you. But there is a pride that comes with being a Texan, starting with the history inspired by the vastness and expressed through individuality. Well, as we close this one out over the best barbacoa tacos I've ever had, all I can say is that this was a good one. Oh yeah, and the key to bull riding? It's all in the hips. Get inside on money Behind all my bills to pay Rode about the water I drank my share of wine From Truckee, California To that L.A. County Austin, I'm headed back home.